I inherited my grandpa's old bench grinder a couple of years ago. From what I can tell, it was built in 1971. It's basically a two-sided electric motor with a grinding stone on one side for shaping and sharpening metal and a wire wheel on the other side for quickly removing rust and paint. I'd love to use this thing, but there's one problem, it doesn't work. You can see that the wheels actually start to turn a little bit, but the grinder's not able to get them going. A lot of people I talked to suggested that it was gonna be the start capacitors or the windings were all screwed up and that it wasn't gonna be worth trying to fix it. But I watched a video from 65 Ford where he said that actually sometimes these old motors can be saved. So we're gonna give it a try. I guess we'll start by taking off these end pieces. I'm gonna use a little bit of PB Blaster to try to break some of the rust loose. Even comes with straw. There's a bolt in the back that's spinning. threads on the left side. I prefer not to destroy stuff, but I these screws are, are rusted beyond recognition, so I'm gonna try to cut a new slot in. Nope, that's not happening. Huzzah! I believe what we need to do is clean the contacts of this copper spring type device. As this spins, this is acting like a clutch and it must suck in and then puts it into a higher gear of sorts. That does mean that I have to take this apart a little bit further. I gotta put that shaft back in there and try to knock this other side out. Oh, sh so some wires actually came undone in here. I need to take some pictures before I go any further and screw this up. I'm not 100% sure where this one went, but I do know that this second wire came out of the little tab right here. So I'll mark this with some tape. I'll just write on there A, and then I'll do the same here. I'm gonna do a little more housekeeping before I forget where all this stuff goes. This side went on the left, so I'm gonna put an L on the shaft. And that goes with this, which also gets an L. This is kinda hard to see, but that's what we're going for. It does look a little bit tarnished, so we'll just clean that up with some sandpaper and see if that helps. We'll check it again. Certainly a cleaner sounding connection. Moment of truth here. Switch, maybe? Now we're good. No, we're not. So as it turns, something bad happens. <laughs> well, I don't know why that would happen. That's weird. Okay, so I figured out that if I bypass the switch by hot wiring it, I can get it to work. 
So now I just need to figure out how to get this switch out because it's so rusted in, and then I'll buy a new switch and replace it. I'm also trying to do this while holding my son. So, ah, man, very grabby. Here, play with the safety glasses. La la la. Okay, we're gonna have to pull the grinder into the mix. And for the record, the kid is safely with his mother right now. Okay, no salvage in that switch. Got it. Got my new switch. I could stop here and have a working grinder. It's just that this is so flaky and horrible. It's gonna be annoying to have to deal with rust flaking off of it every time I wanna use it. So we're gonna spray down these bolts with some PB Blaster and see if we can loosen them up. Well, I'll be. Oh man, that's awesome. I didn't expect that to be easy at all. I'm gonna disconnect this so that we can pull the cord off. So I'm supposed to be able to grip this piece with a vice grips, squeeze it, and then push it out. This is according to something that I wrote a few years ago. So we'll see how well this works. Ah! Wow! It's out! Awesome! We covered the rust removal process on this grinder in a previous video, so we'll skim past it here. But just know that this thing was so rusty. I actually ended up using vinegar rust removal, wire brushing, and molasses rust removal to get the rust off. And I still had a little bit of rust left afterward. Now it seems like I can actually get the blade under the lip of the label, and then I've got tape around the whole edge too. I really would prefer to pop this thing off and paint and then reattach the badge, but these are riveted on. I think that'd be creating too many problems, so we're gonna do it this way. Now we'll do a top coat, and now we'll do a, essentially a primer coat with this Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. It should protect them against further rust. And now I'll use 600 grit sandpaper to just rough everything up that I'm gonna repaint. And then we'll do one more coat of paint, this time using a nicer quality spray paint, Montana Gold, SH Black. Then we'll do one more round of sanding, we'll clean the dust off, and then we'll do a final layer of clear coat. All the sanding should help the next layer of paint adhere, just in case it, that wasn't clear. The clear coat's dry, so now we're gonna take off all the tape. A little piece of tape was sticking out over the edge, so my masking wasn't clean enough. But I can fix that with the paint pen, it should be okay. Now for the nerve wracking part, pulling the tape off of the badge. I forgot to hit the record button. It went really well. Here, let me just pretend. And now we'll start putting the rest of this back together. If you were curious about what the finish looks like with or without the clear coat, this has no clear coat, this has clear coat. The original bolts were extremely rusty on the bottom here, so I'm gonna replace them with stainless steel. These old quick disconnects don't fit with the connections on the switch, so I've gotta cut this off and replace it with these ring terminals instead. This cord retainer bushing is still covered in rust, so I'm gonna give that a clean, as well as the cord and any other pieces that are gonna come in contact with this again. Forgot that these screws are still stuck, so I'm gonna have to drill and put new threads. I stole this ground screw off of a broken outlet. So I'll select a drill bit that's slightly undersized. Then I'll use my screw thread pitch gauge to figure out what tap I need. And now I'll use a tap to cut new threads. Okay, that worked. My 
check and make sure I don't have this wired up backwards. All right, everything checks out there. Okay, so we should be hooked back up now. Let's give it a test before we go any further. Very cool. Picked up a new wheel because I was a little worried that the old one, who knows what's happened to it over the years, and I really don't want it to explode. At this point, work had to pause because of Gonzo the brown bat here. I really don't know what to do with this guy. I really didn't mind him being around, but this was like the third time I found him on the garage floor, so I just called the bat people. Ken and Barb Bowman of Bat Conservation of Wisconsin showed up the same day. They tucked him into a nice little cloth sleeve and took him back to their bat shelter to finish off the winter. Gonzo's welcome squeaks will be missed, but it was the safest move for both Bat and Child, who inevitably would be running around trying to pick him up. With that out of the way, it was time to finish things up. With the top guard in place, you're going to be real tempted to put the wheels back on. Don't do that, because you still have to get these tool rests back in there, and you physically can't fit the bolt in with the wheel on. Don't ask me how I know. Finally, these rubber feet that were in these holes got chewed up, so we'll try these adhesive feet instead. Brown does not match the color of this grinder at all, but it was the best color that they had. All right, moment of truth. And that was that, the bench grinder was finished. So was this project worth it? Absolutely. Those people who told me not to do this were flat out unambiguously wrong. 65 Ford's fix was ridiculously easy. Even most absolute beginners would be able to do this. Really the worst part about this project for me was the restoration itself. Just because it felt like such a waste of time to some degree, having a little bit of rust on a tool is not a big deal. It even gives it character and makes it look cooler. But I think when tools are this rusty, you're gonna be just pulling your hair out, cleaning up after it every time you use the thing. And the rust destroyed the last switch, so there was a big need to tackle the rust problem on this grinder. So that made it worth it, and it looks cool. So hopefully, even though by the time I got my hands on this, it looked like it had been sitting on the bottom of the sea floor, hopefully it's not as bad for when my grandkids someday wants to try to fix it up. I hope you liked this video. If you want to see more, then consider subscribing. If you have any thoughts or questions, please share them in the comments below down on YouTube. I try to respond to anyone who stops by. Thanks for watching.